Wem Dominator Mark III chassis. So this is the second of the Dominators the, um, that I've got on the channel. And this one, again, needs restoration. Uh, at least a good service, if not more. So if you've watched the... the I'll put a link in the description um, for the first one that I did. And uh, this one, we're going to do something slightly different, but not, not majorly. Got a knob missing there, usual thing. Things missing, so the capacitors are shot in this. The um, the electro, the main electrolytic, it's got a bit of a, a hole in it, so it's puffed out a bit of the own gumption. Um, that one's obviously shot. So there's three three main capacitors we change on these, which is the big one, which is 50 50 microfarad, 32 microfarad there. And then we change that to bypass capacitor there. Now the 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 coupling capacitors are on these um, are the mustard caps, which you can see here. There's a few of those around. Let's just spin it round. Right, you can get a better look better look now at, at the board. So you can see we've got these uh, mustard caps and a couple of Weimars. We've got one over there. If we zoom in, you can see. And then if we zoom out and go over here, you can see another one there. So those generally don't leak as a rule of thumb. I'm not saying they're not leaking in this one, of course, but in the other one, they were all top draw. And I very rarely find these caps leaking. Um, very rare. We've just got, we're just going to work on changing the foot, the three capacitors, which is this one. And if we look, you can probably see if we hone in there, you can see that there's, there's a gumption beginning to come out of that. Bit of electrolyte. That one looks reasonable, but it's been in there. March 1974. So I think we've had as money's worth out of that one. And then we'll check the plate resistors as well. Make sure they're intolerance. Usual things, just check the resistors. But where, the, where we're going to differ on this one, um, and it's only a slight difference, we're going to use some different output tubes in this and I am going to experiment with this to see if I can get these tubes to work in here. Now they, they are a Russian 6P or 1.8P and there's this there's always this thing with these Russian tubes always oh, equivalent to this it's equivalent to that I don't really look at them that way to me it's a tube um, we have a 12 watt dissipation um, 2.5 dissipation on the screen and the voltages um, the plates are on the on the 6p 18p um, the maximum plate um, voltage is 250 volts and also that's the same on the screen that, that'll be plate cathode because this arm's cathode biased now as we know we're Russian tubes <laughs> and they they usually can be pushed a lot further on the voltages so what I plan to do is to use these 6p 18p's and I have got a boatload of them um, uh, all brand new that I bought I think I've got I'm not sure if I've got about 50 of them I've got a load of them anyway we're going to try and use them in this in this amplifier and whilst I'm going to I'm not so much going to focus on the plate voltage but the screen voltage if I can get that screen voltage to around 250 volts ish then we should be good to go with those tubes now the, which means experimenting with the with the screen dropping resistor which is this chap which is on here and we can see we'll just go in we can see him he's 1.5k so I'm thinking if I can put something like maybe 3.3k in there I'll get pretty close that will obviously affect the plate voltage more but I'm not too concerned of pushing the plate voltage up it's more the screen so if I can and, and to be honest I think with plate cathode we, we've only got about 275 anyway when these are biased at 12 watts so um, we're not be far away of those voltages so I'm going to give these tubes a try and, and see if I can get them to I mean they'll run 
the pin arts the same there's no there's, so there's no problems there that so they'll run okay um, I do have some more uh, tubes which are 6p 1p's but the the, um, the problem with those is they are they work brilliant and I've used those in a few things and they work really well um, they're a beam tetrode but the problem with those is I've got to rewire the uh, tube bases and of course should someone come along pull those out and put some EL84s in it then that will present a bit of a problem so because um, obviously because this amp will go out into retail when it's finished I don't want you know I don't want somebody dropping a set of EL84s if I've rewired the bases so the 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 6P18P is the same pin pin out so we're going to clean all the sockets we're going to get this board up and when we get the board up we, we're going to change obviously we're going to change any resistors change this and then we're going to re-solder these two bases um, while we've got it up there we might as well I'm also going to do a turns ratio test on the transformer on this one um, because I did on the last one and I want to do I've got uh, three of these yeah three of these and well I've got more but the three to, to actually repair one of we've got uh, one of them and that's going to be coming up later on the channel is being converted into a Fender Princeton and the, the whole board and everything's coming out of it but that's a, a late project and I have actually got some footage when I started that last year and then uh, we are going to get that up on the bench and get all that put together and it'll be a full Princeton black face Princeton layout it'll have uh, it'll have the vibrato and the reverb because I bought a reverb transformer for it and I can just about fit it all onto the chassis so that's going to be a, a good project and one of the reasons why I'm doing that is one of these dominators that I bought the grill cloth <laughs> somebody's changed it and put a union jack on it and we'll have a look we'll have a look at that at the time when we're doing that and obviously so that's that's blown it really so it means new grill cloth so I thought I'll get some fender grill cloth and and instead of having a WEM dominator we'll have a WEMDA Princeton right I'm gonna crack on with this so fold this capacitor out and you can see where the uh, gumptions coming out so he's uh, he's had his day and it's one of those eerie I think that's pronounced eerie e-r-i-e -E, 50 plus 50 and you can see that's got a date code on of uh, 1974 I think that's March 74 I'm guessing can you see you can see that there let's just hone in yeah now you can see it so he's going in the dustbin and here's the um, 32 microfarad that was in there and you can see that's dated that's actually it looks like 9th uh, oh no that's March 74 as well so so pretty accurate these both these capacitors so we know this um, was built um, early mid 74 and if we look at that you can see that that uh, doesn't look ever so good either so they need to go in the bin right I've done some work to this Vox uh, this Vox we've done some work to this uh, Wem got Vox on the brain got two in for repair that's why uh, so we've changed that 30 um, that 32 we've got a 33 in there 350 it was 32 at 350 that come out and we've changed the um, the capacitor the bypass capacitor 47 microfarad there we've got him changed so I've checked all the resistors on this board and they're all incredibly accurate some of them are, are within you know 100k or with within an ohm the unbelievable so these um the board now that's just that's all ready for for testing and uh, now we've got to focus ourselves on putting this electrolytic in there and some new diodes and uh, getting that sorted out and all of course the other thing we've got to do on this amp is that again the, the valve as on the first one that we did the um on the output valve bases the, the grids are connected to pin one and we need to change that over to pin two that's to do with the mullard tubes that are in these um but modern tubes now nah, we need uh, needs to be connected to pin two so you can read up about that on internet if you google it it's someone's wrote written something on there i'm sure they have i read it at one time um 
Mullard EL84s, EL um, wired to pin one on the tube base. If you type that in Google, something along those lines, that should come up. So we've got that to do. And uh, yeah, this is coming along. I've cleaned all the chassis. So that's why it looks clean. It was a bit grubby and so I've, I've given it a clean. So that's good, that's good as well. So we're on his way with this already. Um, I've got to check the fuse, make sure that's accurate. And yeah, so right, I'm going to crack on with this capacitor and we shall return when I've done that. So yeah, they've got this set up ready to run. Um, so we're going to balance these tubes and try and get the voltages correct. So let's just have a look. You can see that six, we can just get that into the camera. So you can barely see it, it's written on the 6P, 6P18P. So there, if you can see that, those ends are actually P's. So they're the tubes we've got in. Ready to get some voltage into this now. Let's just go through what, what I'm doing here. I've got a 1.5K resistor jumped in there, which is why I've not soldered that up properly. I've got the tubes in. Obviously, we've just seen the 6P18Ps that we're putting in. We need to get 250 volts on this meter here or round about that and this other meter on the left is measuring the bias so let's just start bringing up the voltage just waiting to see if we're drawing any current let's just pop it up to 150 so we're 150 on the variac now and we've got 234 on there and that's now should see that beginning to drop and it is doing and hopefully we should see some bias appear on that um, on that meter on the left. At the minute, nothing's happening. It is beginning to go up now slowly. Oh, already we've got something. So that meter can't be connect connecting properly because this is now running. Maybe that that's a bit corroded on that resistor there, and that's yeah, you just seen a, a flick of it appear. I'll actually, try to clean that as well. Let's see if we can get it on there. Yes, there we go. Right, so we've got some we've got some bias voltage, and we can see that's now at 188 volts. I'm at 153 on here. So I'm bringing that up now. I'm just going to let that sit for a minute with this new capacitor. We're not going to be far out, you know, because we've got 190 volts on the Variac and that's at 213. So 250, 250 is what we're going to get, is what these tubes will take. We can push the plate a bit further, I think. I'm not always so keen on pushing the screens, although I did on the PL84s and so far, having done quite a few gigs with that amp, and they've they've been fine. So that's stabilised at 210. Well, let's just see what's on the plate. 235. Let's go up to 200. Just a shade over 200. There we go. 10.4 on the bias. I think we need, uh, looking at that bias reading there, I think we need, um, they're already beginning to get warm. I think we need a bigger bias resistor. Those tubes are drawing a little bit more current. They are. Those tube sockets are a bit filthy as well. You may, up having, may end up having to change those tube sockets. I'm not sure yet. This amp very grubby inside. Where the last one I did, the tubes, the tube sockets were clean as the day they were new. These aren't so good, and that's what that frying is. So 10.53 tells me that's quite high. So it, 
and also this not quite warm so plate plate cathode voltage is 248 so let's do the maths we know that's 100 ohm resistor so we've got 10.53 divided by 100 and they're drawing 105 milliamps divided by 2 that's 52 so I can tell you that's way too high times 248 that's 13 watts that's drawing at 200 volts so that that's got to come off at that 13 13 watts if we take even if we take 5% off for the screen um, that's 12.4 and we're only at 200 volts so no that resistor and this is where the balancing act comes in now we have to balance these tubes at 12 watts and we have to keep that voltage and that's why that um that plate voltage is so low um because normally you'd expect to see about 275 plate cathode on these and that's why it's so low because these tubes are over dissipating that resistor is too small right i've jumped at 150 ohm resistor in there now gone up 50 ohms and i think we're gonna have to go up at least that so let's start going up again and this time I'm, I'm just going to go back onto the plate there I'm on, on the screen sorry because that's what I want to be monitoring more than anything so I'm going to go up again so I'm just yeah so that's just that you see that's at 200 about 250 now 163 volts but of course it's not drawn down yet so we're waiting for it to draw down and one of the meters is swearing at me again. They'll both reset them. And you can see that's coming down now rapidly. And you can see we've got bias voltage now. And we've got sand. Even at that 163. So let's go up again. So that's still coming down now. 244. Right, I'm just going to take a bias measurement now with 150 ohms in there. So we've got 269 now on that plate to cathode. Remember, we're measuring this plate to cathode because it's, because it's cathode biased. So let's just see. So now I've got 150 ohms. 13.06 divided by 150 divided by two that's 43 milliamps we're running that at now let's times that by 268 and that's 11.66 so we've got 150 ohm cathode resistor and we've got 2.2 k dropping resistor from node one to node two let's go again now that as that reduces that voltage on the screen i'll get more volts on the plate That's on, so that's the plate that we're on now. Let's just go back onto the screen. So yeah, we're well under now, look, you see. So let's see if that goes down anymore. Because we've not gone up a lot really from 1.5K to 2.2. It's not a massive amount, but that's still dropping. So that's 250 and I'm at 227 on the variac, so we're still it's still going down. We're still not quite there. We're still not quite there. What's on the plate now? 288 now, so you see that plate voltage has gone up. It was around about 267. So we're pushing that plate now up about 50 volts, but I think we'll be okay with the plate. It's the screen that, um, so what, I want, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna push it up to, and I'm gonna push this up now to 240 volts because the UK mains voltage fluctuates around about 230 to 240, although it has been known to be a bit higher than that. So at 240, we're at 261. So we're only 11 volts over. 
um, and we're 300 volts on there now then let's bring down usually sits about 238 when I test it so we're only 7 volts over now on the 8 volts let's check the bias So 15.3 divided by 180 equals 85 milliamps. Divide that by 2 equals 42.5. Take away 5%. That's 40 milliamps. And if we times that by 299, that gives us 12 watts on the nose. The question is, and that's at 200, and just pipping 237 volts on the uh, on the variac, which is about where our mains voltage sits, 263.7. So with 13.8 volts over on that screen, and do you know what? I think I'm going to risk that for a Swiss kit. Risk it for a Swiss kit, as we used to say. That was some kind of um, edible wafer or some cheese cracker or something from the 70s, I think. So, yeah, so 180 ohm resistor, 2.2K um, on the... Uh, on the, the first node resistor the first node second node resistor which drops which is sets the screen voltage that's 2.2k so it's all a balancing act and i think we've probably just about got that right we're 50 we're 50 volts over on those plates to be honest i don't think that'll matter given these are russian tubes and given the fact that um you know people use the l84s and they're pushing 140 volts on what they're capable of I've seen amps with 440 volts on the plate on an EL84 and clearly it ma it says limiting values 300 so we're not pushing these massively are we 50 volts on the on the plate and 13 or 14 volts on the screen the thing with these tubes is they're incredibly cheap so if I put a pair of JJ's in this they would be nearly 40 quid if I put a set of something like Softex or something like that, tongue soles, you're talking over 50 to 60 pound for those 60 pounds, 60 dollars in, in American money. But these tubes, these stand me at about three pounds each. <laughs> so if they last a couple of three years and they blow, or they just get tired or whatever um, they're costing nothing really they were extremely cheap um, in fact they may have cost me less than that because my memory serves me that I bought 50 of these and they were about 70 quid 75 quid and even if they were postage on that so they may even stand me a couple of quid each so I'm going to use these tubes the 12 watt dissipation the 2.5 dissipation on the screens should they really be replacing the l84s yeah if if you can get the match the voltages up we're a little over i think we'll get away with that personally and these are cheap tubes if in six months time they've blown then we'll have to come back and relook at this tip what i might do now is drop a set of el 84s in and just see where the bias is on it and i think i will do that just as just to see if anybody does drop a pair in, what will actually happen? Right, I've dropped a pair of EL84s in. A pair of Mellards. We're just waiting for these to warm up. And they're warming up now. So now look at that screen voltage now. It's 290 volts with the EL84s in. And look where the uh, bias is. So if we go to the plate, we've now got 316 volts plate cathode. The at the same 236 volts. Ten point seven six divided by one eighty is fifty nine milliamps divided by two. 
Take away 5% for the screen, they come out at 28 milliamps. And if we times that by 318, so they're now dissipating at 6 watts, which is really low, obviously. But what that does tell me is that if somebody whips those out and puts in a pair of EL84s, the bias is going to go lower and not higher. And so there's going to be no issues there other than it's going to be in crossover distortion when it's cranked up and it won't sound as good. Um, having said that, that, that's not even 70%. That would be 8.4 watt, uh, watts. So that's quite low. But then the obvious thing there is then if someone's doing, if a tech's doing that, then he's going to rebias it correctly. And probably if, an 100 ohm resistor would put that roughly back to where it was because these are biased at 12 watts. And I've biased it at 12 watts with, with the new tubes in. Now I could have biased this at 13 watts. And people bias the L84s at 30, more. Some people, I've seen them as much as 17 watts. Um, and some people prefer the sound of them when they're around about 13 watts. Um, they do tend to sound better. We could do that, the cheap tubes. That would get the voltages probably exact that we wanted on the plate. If we did that, so if somebody drops a set of tubes in this set of L84s, there's no issues. It just obviously it'll just need biasing a bit hotter, but it'll run perfectly well and it won't, you know, there'll be no issues. It's not like we're shoving them in, oh, it's gone up 15 watts. They're not drawing nearly as much current as the Russian tubes, and they do draw more current as a rule. Um, so, so yeah, I'm sure there's some L84s you'd put in would draw more current. So, enough of me waffling, that's about where we are with that. We could push this up to 13 watts, just as an experiment really, and just see where that leaves us. So I might give that a go. I'm enjoying this. This is fun. It is for me anyway. Because I'm utilising these tubes. I have got 15.7. That's the volts drop across the cathode resistor. The cathode resistor is 177 ohms because I've now measured it more accurate, not just 180. 177 that gives us 88 milliamps, and we divide that by 2, that leaves us 44. Take 5% for the screen, that leaves 42 milliamps. And if we times that by about 306, that comes out at 12.8. So we are pushing these towards 13 watts. And I'm going to give them a go at that. Because people push tubes much higher than that. They're, they're, they're over. They're not much over, are they? They're, but they are a little bit over. So our screen voltage is 269 volts. So we're 19 volts over on the screen. And I think I'm going to leave that because... I think I'm going to get away with that, all right, and we are 305 volts, so we're 55 volts over on the plate, but I don't think that's going to be an issue on the plate or on the screen at 19 volts. But one thing I'm going to do in this amp, there's one thing that's not in it, I'm going to put an HT fuse in it, because these don't have an HT fuse, and uh, seeing as we are pushing these valves a little harder, we are going to put an HT fuse in. So there we go, the 6P18P tubes um, are running in a WEM dominator, albeit a little bit over spec, but I think we'll get away with that, and I've got a feeling they'll sound pretty good. I could be wrong. Right, so that's it. I'm still be some people out there that, that are um, not agreeing with what I've done there. Um, but these tubes cost two, about two pound a piece of that. I think I seem to think uh, that I bought 50 of those for about 80 quid. So, yeah, they're a result. They're for nothing. I'm going to use them. And if they last a couple of years, then, well, they last a couple of years. That's still cheap. Stick another pair in. So, as we've got this amp now, if somebody puts a set of EL84s in it, then the bias is going to be around 6 or 7 watts. So there's going to be no issues there. Someone's just got to change the, the bias resistor. Yeah, they've got to take the board up, but hey-ho. So there we are. So now I've done that, I'm going to take all these test probes off and uh, solder everything incorrectly and make it nice and tidy and safe. And then we're going to put this 
am back together um, after I've put that HT fuse in but I'm also I'm just going to check for any leakage on the coupling capacitors and then I think we'll be good to go we get this put together and get in its case now the other thing that I, I did on this amp I did a turns ratio test on the transformer I'm just going to turn this down and the reason that that I did that the previous dominator that I did I had a 12 ohm speaker which was which is a bit peculiar and when I measured that um, transformer um, I got quite a strange primary on it which was I think something just shy of 4k but this one I've just done the maths on this one and at 16 ohms um, it comes out as 11k now these it, the Celestians that these I had, uh, had in, some had the Celestians in and some had the 12 ohm speaker, but the later ones had the Celestians. I've got a, a Celestian vintage 30 16 ohms to go in this, and we've got that transformer at an 11k primary. So, I think it was 10.8 actually, 10,800, but I rounded it off to 11. So if we get the calculator out, 306 squared, divide that by the dissipation we have, which is 12.8. That comes out at 7.3k primary. And I got that transformer to be 11k. Right, we progressed a bit more with this amp and uh, suddenly had a bit of a brainwave <clears throat> last night. We're working really late, so I've put a couple of screen resistors on the on the player um, on the valve bases. Um, pin six is no connection, so I've connected across from pin six to pin nine, and I've got two 1k um, two watt metal film, uh, sorry, metal oxide resistors on there. And that's settled this amp down really well. I've got the bias down to 12 watts now. Um, we're up to nearly 13 before I put those on. So they've settled things down. So we're down to 12 watts. I've got the... Um, um, I've got the, the drop-in resistor between nose 1 and 2 installed. You can just see it there. 2.2k is switched on, so I don't want to get too close. Um, so we've got that in, in place. So I'm going to put an HT fuse in this amp and I may put some fuses in to protect the uh, heat filament windings as well. I have done that in the past with these amps. In fact, the two that I use for gigging, I think I've got those. And if I remember, I think I did that mod. This channel is working fine, but this channel is not working. And that's the base control. So we've got problems on there. It's not the tube. Um, the, the, there's two Wymore caps in there. You perhaps can't see them. or you, um, Can you see them? Might be able to. But there's a couple of Wymore caps in and the 33 nanofarad. Uh, one of those is leaking. It's got about two and a half volts on one end. The other one's not. But I think I'm probably going to swap both of those. That frying is on that channel. So I thought that that was a plate resistor to start off with, but turns out it's not. That's our, that's channels working perfectly, but we've got problems on this channel. So we've got to delve into that and find out what's wrong with that. But we are getting there now with this uh, with this amp. So the voltage is on these six p one eight p's. I've got the meter measuring the voltage on the screen now and I've got 267 volts going on there that's 17 volts over I can live with that the plate remember this is plate cathode 
303 volts so we are 50 or 304 so we're 54 volts over on the on the plate and i don't think that'll bother these one iota i don't at all so i think they'll be absolutely fine so with all that in hand i think that's a wrap we've just got to put the bias um the bias resistor still tacked in so uh jumpered in sorry so we've just got to put the bias resistor in and then we've got to find this fault fit that those fuses and then this is ready to go back together right we're doing a bit more probing on this amplifier i've discovered and you might not i might not be able to get in too close and if i do you won't be able to see the meter as well probably but or we might if we just try and turn it sideways so you can see it so if I, if I test this plate resistor, you can see I've got 214 volts there, just about past my hand. And you can see on the other side, this plate voltage. Now when I put this tube in, and now we test, and suddenly we've got 19 volts on there. And we've got the same on the other plate resistor. So that tells me there's a short some, somewhere. So if we now go pin one we've got 215 that's our plate voltage nothing on pin two we'd expect that that's the grid nothing on the cathode because the tubes are four and five at heaters pin six 249 volts pin seven 211 volts why would they be that's the um that's the grid of the second stage so we have got short somewhere across and that, I'm guessing that's on the tube base, so we need to get this board out again. Right, this large uh, mustard cap here, this 100 nanofarad, um, has got 99 volts on this side, and it shouldn't have anything. And that's going on to the, that's part of the EQ, and I think that's connected to the base pot, which is where we've got all that horrendous crackling, because we've got DC on that. So, we need to change that resistor. It's finished. Uh, took quite a bit of doing and we had quite a lot of uh, faults um, and uh, one thing or another going on with this amp. So just have a recap of what we've done to this amplifier. So the two tone um, caps there, tone stack caps, were leaking. Uh, one of those was the mustard cap, the other was the Wymar. They were both leaking on there. The fault that we'd got um, with the voltage was this capacitor down here, which was leaking, which which was intermittently leaking uh, voltage onto the grid, onto pin seven of that tube, and it was considerable amounts as well. Um, and the confusion that came in there is that that when I was looking at this amp. I was thinking this was the base control, and of course it's the treble. As soon as I realised what a mistake I'd made, because they're not marked on here, they're on the there's an aluminium strip on the cab, and the this volume treble, it's volume base treble, not volume treble base. It seems to be a bit of an assumption in your head that base comes after treble, what whatever. But anyway, I'd got that arse of a tip, so I've. Once I realised it, 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 it was that was the treble, then I realised exactly what was wrong, and it was that capacitor there, and uh, it was intermittent. When I moved it, we lost that voltage on the grid, but it was it still wouldn't work. So I swapped that, swapped those, um, and then I've swapped all the hundred k plate resistors as well. Because some of those looked a bit iffy, and I've put some nice metal film ones in there. Some of them were half watt, I think, and I've put some one watts in. I've swapped. I've also swapped the the hundred k plate resistors on this channel as well on this side, um, and I also swapped the um, the tone stack caps as well, all of them on that side. The only original caps I've left in, and the musters are these um, coupling caps on the stages which really aren't leaking at all so i've left those in but the others are just a bit iffy you know I, it, maybe at some time this amp's it, it's probably been somewhere damp and some of them was, it's affected some of them maybe it's just an amp with long hours i don't know 
you don't normally find those mustard caps leaking it's rare but you do occasionally and in this instance we did and the Weimars as well you, you don't often find those leaking but they were leaking so maybe a bit of damp had got in them I don't know whatever so that's what we've done on on the board we've um, we replaced a coupling uh, the bypass cap cathode bypass capacitor we replaced the uh, drop uh, the smoothing cap there uh, we've got we've replaced this big cap here as well and uh, now to the we put an ht fuse in it as well by the way now that, to these valves so these are the 6p18ps that we've been balancing up and we've finished up we've got these to work we've got a 2.2k dropping resistor between nose one and two instead of a 1.5 and that's helped reduce some of the voltage on the screens it's the screens that you tend to worry about putting too much voltage on i've made these tubes work long term well we'll just have to wait and see won't we but as i've as i said before and some people might not agree with what i've done here these tubes they, they probably cost me a couple of quid a piece if that so i'm really not fussed um if they last two years it's for nothing i went and bought a set of decent tubes to go in this you're talking up towards 50 quid so they stand me at four quid or less and the brand new tubes so that's where we're going to leave that so now all that's left now this is all back together and uh, all that's left to do now is uh, is the cabinet so we're going to have a look at that and the speaker that we're going to put in the cabinet right we've got this face down we've got the amp back in the uh, cabinet um, we put the hoover in the cabinet hoovered a bit out there's the speaker that we've got you can see that Celestian Heritage 30 it'll be most suffice for this uh, amplifier so just have a look at this cabinet so you can see if we go inside um, you can see that get that to focus you can see it's made of plywood the, the back and the sides the bottom are made of plywood this board is chipboard on here that the amp mounts on but the rest of it's all ply not a bad cabinet at all so it's just a matter of now wiring up that speaker and putting the back on or the two backs because it's in two halves and uh, we're away to go we can give this amp a demo right I've got this amp all up and running and we're going to have a listen I've had a bit of a bit of a, a tweak on it and I have to say it sounds most splendiferous um, there is one slight problem though and we'll, I'll show you that later you might not be able to see it the fuse hose has dropped a bit so there I just noticed as I lifted it up onto here so we're going to have to take it out and put a new fuse holder in that just shows that you know you have to be careful with these old amps whether that's whether I've caught that on something putting it in or whether it's just dropped to bits with age so we need to swap that before this amp gets any serious play time but we'll, it'll be fine while I'm demonstrating it so we'll have a listen Both these channels are exactly the same and it, I suppose it would be possible to go in and, and change them you know it quite easily we, we could have really modded this one maybe the next one we do I was careful about modding vintage amps but uh...
used to that. That's on the next pickup. <laughs> amp as well it's incredibly loud compared to some of the others and I don't know where that's the tubes that we've put in this but this thing is ballistically loud if we go into the other channel Dominator, I think we'll call this Wem Dominator Mark III Volume 2. Because there's going to be a Volume 3 and possibly a Volume 4. We have got a couple more of these to look at. And again, we've, we've gone at this one a different angle to what we did the first one, where we've we've utilised those 6P18P tubes. And short term, that's been an absolute success. This amp sounds phenomenal. It's really loud. Um, one or two things is going to happen now. This app is just going to run forever or for another four or five years on those tubes if it's used regularly, even more probably. Or they'll, you know, just shoving that screen voltage up, that 30 volts and the plate voltage up, th these tubes may fail in a short space of time. There's no way of knowing that. All, all this is trial and error. You have to think when people first took the EL84 and they were shoving them in box AC30s, you know, in, in the early 60s um, and they were pushing the, the plate and screen dissipation above 300 volts, which is its limiting values on the data sheet. Um, they had no way of knowing how long they were going to last, really. You know, and n neither did most techs. And now you see people shoving up to 400 volts plus on an EL84. And they, they, you know, even at that, they last a good two or three years. So I don't think we're pushing these valves excessively and no one knows just what these tubes will take. And the only way to find that out is trial and error. So we put these in and uh, it sounds awesome. And uh, with a bit of luck, they'll last a long time and they're cheap. Like I said, they're probably getting more expensive now online because more and more people are waking up to these tubes and of course people are looking for alternatives because tubes have gone up in value so much but there we go so that's been another one um, so thanks for watching thanks for all the people that's, that are subscribing to the channel and uh, I'll see you all in another video and for now you all take good care of yourselves bye bye